Welcome, folks. Let's say you are interested in using a quantum electronic design automation tool to render a quantum circuit in Blender. And let's also assume that you have Blender installed on your system. We can go through some settings to get some good render results here in a moment. Well, in a couple of, couple of minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. But the tool that we are going to use and let's say we are interested in using Qiskit Metal for that. You can come to this repository here, Qiskit Community slash Qiskit Metal. And you can attempt to install it using these installation instructions in order to download this quantum device layout program. And, well, at least in our case, we're using it for like designing the layout of a quantum circuit. And if that's not clear enough, you can visit this repository that I wrote under OJB hyphen quantum slash Kiskit hyphen metal hyphen to hyphen litho. So Kiskit metal to litho. And in this repository, although it is primarily aimed at using Kiskit metal to fabricate a quantum chip onto a real substrate in a lithography bay or a clean room, there is a set of instructions here that will help you to install Kiskit metal in chronological order. If you don't have PIP installed, then here is some useful steps here you can take to install PIP. And then the installation steps for Kiskit Metal is stored here at this hyperlink. I have it in the repository, as you can see. And if you scroll down, you can follow this in chronological order to install Kiskit Metal. And then you should be able to use and operate Kiskit Metal once this installation is complete. So that should be useful. And if you don't have Blender installed, you can simply just type in Blender on your browser, and it will take you to this result called Blender.org, under Blender.org, and then there's a download page. You click on that and install Blender for free. It's open source, so that's great. Another open source program that we need, of course, is KLayout. So you can, if you type in KLayout download, it will take you to this result under KLayout Layout Editor and Viewer, where you can download KLayout. And you should see this page. And you can scroll down to your supported system and then download the executable file. In this case, if I'm using Windows, like I am today, I can click on this executable and then it will download it. Again, it's open source, so it's free. OK, the other thing is we also need to install JupyterLab. So given that you do have pip installed on your machine, you can come here and type in JupyterLab download. Now, if we click on this result under jupyter.org, then this page should show up. It says installing Jupyter. And you have a result here that says Jupyter Lab and then Jupyter Notebook. You can install both of these. And then here is the pip command to install Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook. And here is the command that you can type into the terminal. In this case, for Windows, it would be command prompt or PowerShell. And once that's installed, you can come to command prompt. Like I use command prompt a lot. So I, I can type in Jupyter Lab and then Jupyter Lab will actually open up after I run this command. So just wait for a few seconds and you get this local host 888. And now I can access files on my local machine as well as a list of terminal, well, a list of kernels that I created. And you can also search online how to create your own custom kernels in Python. OK, so now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and go back to Qiskit Metal, the primary Qiskit Metal repository from the Qiskit community. And since we are interested in rendering a quantum circuit, we can you can either choose to download the entire repository, or you can do what I do is for today's example, go to Tutorials, the Tutorials folder. You can see that here. And if you scroll down, you'll find a section that says Appendix C, Circuit Examples. So if I click on this, you will see a list of some components as well as chip examples. And here's one that says Small Quantum Chips. If we click on this, for example, there is a Python notebook that has four, a four qubit chip on there. So let's go ahead and click on this. And we will see a Python notebook that is rendered here in the browser. But you don't see the layout because it, takes, it actually takes up hmm, 
storage space on the on the server or on wherever this GitHub is located, perhaps like on a Microsoft server or something, but that actually does take up space. So it's not rendered here, but what you can do is download the raw file. So I will download this and then place this in my download folder and go ahead and click enter. Okay, so I have it downloaded. And now what we can do is go ahead and close the repository. In fact, we can, we can close everything else. And now we have this Jupyter Lab open. Okay, so I have it saved in the download folder. Now what I can do is start to open the four qubit chip example. And if I double click on this, then the notebook will open here. And given that you do know how to install Qiskit Metal, and perhaps you can go through some of the rest of the tutorials, then you can read the comments on how to modify the scripts, how to basically use all of these Python scripts to modify the chip design. Like for example, the coplanar waveguide width, the, the gap of that coplanar waveguide, and so forth. And then we have transmon on here. There's different components we can add. And if you go down the list, you'll also notice that there is a section for how many qubits is on there. Let, let me look for it here and I can point it out. There should be a section here under the number of qubits you can add. Okay, so okay, so you have qubit one, two, three, and four. Four transmons. Yep. And then what you can do from there is begin to list other transmons, other transmon locations based on where it is located on this x and y coordinate. So there's a an x and y coordinate plane where you can place the location of certain transpons and then begin linking them together. So that's what that's for. But what we're going to do here is, in my case, I'm going to go to my Qiskit Metal, Metal kernel. Maybe you have your own kernel that has Qiskit Metal installed, or perhaps it's just installed on the, on the, on the main kernel, the Python kernel, then that's fine. You might have, it, you might have Qiskit Metal installed on something like um, Python 3. So if you have Qiskit Metal installed there, then you can simply click on that kernel and then run, run the code that's written here. So in my case, I'm going to stick with Qiskit Metal and I'll go ahead and run all of the cells. And it will begin to run the Python script in kernel onto order. And what this is going to do is it's going to open a secondary window where the graphic user interface or G, the GUI for Qiskit Metal will show up. And if we click on that, you will see this window that says Qiskit Metal, the quantum builder. And if we wait for a couple of seconds for the rest of the, the scripts to run, then you will see a quantum circuit layout here. And it will ask if we want to save the changes to the design. So we definitely do, but we need to exit out of that because we are not interested in closing this immediately. All we need to do actually is click on the GDS button that you see here. And I will click on this and it will allow me to save the design file on my local machine. So I'm going to put it here in the downloads folder. And here's a critical piece of information. What I'm going to say is Qiskit metal underscore four qubits. And then I need to add an extension, GDS, which is a design file for the layout. So adding that extension is very important so that we can open it on the K-Layout program. Let's go ahead and save this and then press export. And then just wait a couple of seconds. It will save the layout into the local machine. And then we can go ahead and close this window. Okay, so now it's done. You can see this, the preview of the quantum circuit layout. And we can go ahead and close this. And we are done with this script. So you can simply just save it and then close it and then close that. Okay. So 
now what we need to do is actually oh, go to K layout. You can see my reverb effects <laughs> here. Let's let's open K layout. Okay, so the important thing is you need to be able to open K layout editor. So if it's not the editor, then you might face some issues. So you can go to the main menu, for example, here in Windows, and then I will be able to see K layout in a K layout editor. That's what we're interested in using. So now what we can do is go to File and then click on Open. And we should be able to see the Kiskid Metal for Qubits GDS file here. And go ahead and click Open. And now we can actually see the quantum circuit layout from Kiskid Metal located here. Now, there are some elements that are not necessary to render. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and manually remove those. And what we can do is say, for example, you get this really sharp looking uh, a square, like a sharp square wave looking structure here that we are not interested in rendering. So I'm going to go ahead and turn some layers off to see if if that layer goes away. Okay, so that's the one. I just hit it, it's gone, and I'm going to go ahead and delete. And let's see here. There's some cheesing on here. The cheesing is fine. We, we are interested in keeping that. And the wave guy we want to keep. Let's see here. This one. Is it? Okay, so that. Okay, so it's a left stripe. Okay, so that's that's the layer that I don't need. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of it. And this is what you should see. There are four, four pocket transponds here. And then you got the coplanar waveguides, of course. And then you got the cheesing to get rid of the superconducting vortices. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one. Don't need it either. Delete entry. And then let's see. Let's say you were interested in placing a, a Josephson junction here. What you can do if, if you really want to render the Josephson Junction, just as an option, is you can go to Tools under the Tools tab, go to Manage Packages, and then a window will pop up. What you can do from here is scroll down and look for KQ Circuits. So if we click, if we double click on KQ Circuits, you can click on Apply, and then you select OK, and we'll begin to install it here on the K Layout program. So now it has installed, it just took a few seconds. And I should be able to see it under current packages. There's a current packages tab, an update packages tab, as well as install new packages tab. So it should be under current package. There you go. We should be able to see it, see the say qubit elements library here on the left side, but there is none. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this layout as is. I'm gonna click save as. DXF because Blender can render DXF files. And I want to only save the visible layers or the layers that are on the list, either one of these. I can press OK. Now we can close the layout, the K layout program, and then reopen K layout because that will allow us to double check if anything. If, if the layers that we have deleted are actually deleted. Sometimes it doesn't properly delete layers that we want to have deleted. <laughs> okay, so now we can go here to File tab, then open, go to the download location, and we're gonna go ahead and open the DXF file. Although it says DWG, but actually it's a DXF file. Close this, and now we should see this quantum circuit layout. And all the layers that we wanted to be there, they are still there. That's good. Okay. But let's say you are interested in uh, using KQ circuits together with Kiskid Metal, then that is also possible. You can go to the junction library, for example, and you can click on Manhattan, and you can drag it over 
if you are interested in adding some Joseph's injunctions here to the quantum circuit data. You can drop it there, just for example, and perhaps you are interested in rendering this in Blender, then this is possible. But this is just for demonstration purposes, so I'm going to go ahead and um, delete this just to show that it's possible. So in order to get rid of the layers that are not being used, what I can do is left click in this under this layers column, and I can say clean up layer entries, and we'll get rid of all the layers that are not being used here in this quantum circuit layout. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this one more time. Save it as a DXF. Press save. Go to replace, and then save the layers that are shown in the list, and click OK. All right, that's good. Now let's go ahead and go to Blender. Now, Blender doesn't always have uh, some default imports, import options. So let's go to the Edit tab and then click on Preferences. And what we want to do is go to the search box here under the add-ons, the add-ons uh, tab there, and then click on the search bar and then click or type DXF. If we go to DXF, you should see some options here, and these might be checked. These might not be checked, actually. And what you want to do is make sure that they are checked. Import, export, AutoCAD DXF format. You can click both of these and make sure that it's enabled. The other thing we need to enable is are, are some mesh tools. So if you type in mesh on this little search bar, make sure you click on edit mesh tools. This is important. Okay. So once that has been enabled, you see the checkbox on that. Now you can go ahead and save and go to this little three bar icon here and click on save preferences. And you can refresh to make sure it's showing and then go ahead and close this. Now on my machine, I do have, actually let's reopen that really quick. I do have under the system, it shows that I'm connected to an external RTX 4070 Ti Super. And I'm using that today, so that's important for doing very powerful renders. But generally, after closing that, what you can do is you can come here to the render properties, and it says render engine. The render properties looks like a little camera icon. By default, there is an EV render engine, which primarily uses the CPU. And then there's another render engine that primarily uses, well, in this case, it gives you the option to just use the GPU. So I'm going to click on Cycles. And today we are not interested in using denoising, so I'm going to go ahead and click that, turn that off. And then the noise threshold, I can set this to something like 0.09. And for the samples, I can set this to something like 295. Or maybe just 95. Yeah, that's, that's decent. And we are also interested in going to light paths. And we want to enable fast GI approximation so that we can save on some render time. And you can choose to click on motion blur if you want motion blur to make the, the graphics more, more realistic to some extent. Or you can click it off to keep the clarity. Okay. And if the lighting conditions are not bright enough and it's really dim, then you can increase this number based off of how much computing power that you can perceive. <laughs> Okay, 
So, but for today's for today's demo, let's just keep this at 12. That's good enough. Now, if we go to this other tab, it says Output Properties. We should see some resolution formats here. And you can choose to change this to your liking. And in my case, I like to use some personal settings. So I'm going to go back to my GitHub page. And I have a repository called Blender Common Tools. And these are common Blender tools that I use. So you can visit this page if you'd like to, to see some of the very useful Blender tools so that you get comfortable with using Blender. And down here at the bottom, I have some aspect ratios. I like to stick with three by two aspect ratio because this whole screen is a three by two aspect ratio display. <laughs> and for today's demo, I'm going to go ahead and stick with this 4K aspect ratio or 4K version of this three by two aspect ratio. So 3840 by 2560. So now the camera will render the the objects in 4K resolution. And to save on the render time, I'm going to go ahead and just click on the render region and then crop to render. And the frame rate, it says 24 frames per second here. But you can also set a custom value here. Like, for example, 20 works pretty well for me, so I'm going to go... I'm going to go ahead and stick with 20. And that looks good. The output, we can also save this. So I'm going to use the download folder. And I'm going to click accept. Let's say I want to save Kiskid Metal. The name of the, the file output should say something like Kiskid Metal or Felix 001. Enter. You can have this save as an image, or in my case, I want to render an animation at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and click on FF MPEG video. And the encoding, I'm going to change this encoding option under container to MPEG 4. And the encoding is going to be in real time with uh, high quality or perceptually lossless. And then the video codec should be H.264. That's good. Okay. Now, the next thing we need to do is... I'm going to click on this thing that says World Properties. The background by default is kind of this gray color, as you can see here. But I'm going to change it to black. And you will only see black if you click on this render, rendered preview of the viewport shading. If I click on this, then you will see that the background is black. It does have a grid here, but the grid does not render in the actual output so if we were to render the image or the animation you would actually just see black along with the objects that we're going to import so i can click on this camera icon and it will bring me to this camera and if i scroll forward you will see that this box changes and if i hold the control key and then click the scroll button I can carefully zoom in the size that I want the screen, this little box to be. This is the view, the viewport itself, the real rendered view. And now I can click the letter N on the keyboard and then go to the view tab and then click on camera to view. Now I can click the letter N one more time to close that. And now the camera view is locked. This is important. The other thing is, I want the camera to be aligned with this grid. And in order to do that, I need to click on the camera here and then go to Object Properties. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the rotation 
to zero. And then the Z can also be set to zero as well. And now the camera will be aligned to this grid. And when I zoom in or zoom out, you can you can tell that it's still oops, control Z. It still remains aligned to the grid. This is good. That's what I want. And now while the camera is still selected, I can come down here to this little camera icon. It says object data properties. And I can click on depth of field to give the camera some, some natural camera effects. And I can also extend this clip. So there's a clip start and then end here. I need to add some extra zeros on here so that the camera view is not limited to a short distance. I need to be able to see pretty far. So I'm going to add some zeros to that. Okay, now we are ready to actually begin importing the file. So these are some good settings to have. The next thing we need to do is come over here to File, and then we can save this. We saved it as Kiskit Metal Full Chip Blend. And what I need to do is go to Edit, and then go to Preferences. Actually, no, no, no. Let's take a step back. Go to the File tab. And then go to import and you should see an option that says AutoCAD DXF. Let's click on this and go to the download location where the, the layout is located. So the layout for the Kiskit Metal is right here. And then I'm going to scale this down to 0 0.0005. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to import this. And if I change the, well, you can kind of see it there, but if I change the viewport shading to something like, for example, this material preview, then I can actually see the quantum chip, the, the, the chip outline that is the edges and such. So I'm going to click this camera icon so that I can stop using the camera. And now I can actually come up here to the layout. And what we need to do from here is box select this. So click and drag over the entire chip. And okay, let me let me do something first. So let's click on some part of the chip and then box select the entire chip itself. And if that's if that's not working well, what, what we can do is go to the wireframe wireframe option and then reselect everything again so that we don't miss anything. This is generally a good practice to use wireframes in, or, in order to select everything. All right, and then what we need to do from here is go to the object tab, which is under object mode, and then go to convert. So there's a convert option and we need to convert this into a mesh. Once the mesh is achieved, we can reselect the layout and then press Control J, and that will allow us to join all these features together. So you should see everything in orange now, and it, this is still in wireframe. Now, while it's still selected, in order to extrude this and turn it into a two D layout and then a three D a three D model, we need to go to edit mode. And now what we can do is go to the edge select. There's a little icon here on the left side. And we can box select this entire chip layout. And then we can zoom in just a little bit like this. And while it's still selected, press the letter F on the keyboard. And now it will fill in all of these features that were that were shown on the the GDS and the DXF layout. So now we are halfway there. What we need to do is zoom in a little bit closer again. And then while it's still selected, go ahead and press the letter E on the keyboard. And we'll begin to extrude this layout so that we can create a 3D model. And then click again. And now we're done. 
with the conversion to 3D. Let's go ahead and go back to object mode here and then click somewhere over here. Let me get the lid, get rid of the whole panel there. And if we go to viewport shading, we can see that the layout has been turned into a 3D model. There you go. So that's the quantum quantum circuit layout from Kiskit Metal. And now we have turned it into a 3D model. But there is no lighting in here. So what we need to do next is actually add the, the lighting. So let's go ahead and go to object. And then, or actually next to the object, we can go to add, the add tab. And then go to mesh. And then click on, let's see here. Hmm. Cylinder. We're going to turn this cylinder into a light. This is good because you can create somewhat of a ring, a ring light effect. And while the cylinder is still selected, we can go to this little selection here, and then we can. Oh, let me redo that real quick. I'm going to add the cylinder. Okay, and we should see this option here. It allows us to increase the, the faces of the of the cylinder. We can decrease it down to just three faces. It turns into a prism, or we can make it up to like maybe two hundred or something. And so now you have a relatively smooth smooth face. I mean that's one way of doing it. If not, that's fine. We can also I'll show you how to smooth out the edge of this of this cylinder. But we can scroll this, we can move this cylinder upwards by using this move tool. And now while while it's still selected, we can go to edit mode in order to select one of the faces. So I'm gonna use this face selection here, this little icon, and I'm gonna click on this one face here. And I'm gonna while that face is selected, I'm gonna click on this arrow tool, this move tool, and then just push the face. And now we have a disc. And this disc we can use it as a light. And I'll show you that here. I'm gonna go back to object mode. And before we turn it into a light, I want to go to object, set origin. And then say set origin to center of mass for the disk that is. So it has to be selected to do that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and select control C and then control V because I want two disks. No, three disks. So I'm gonna click on this one, and then I'm gonna scroll this upwards. That's good. And I'm going to do the same thing again. Control V, select the arrow, move it up. The thing is, I want to, I want to put a light on here that that is that, that can behave kind of like a ring light. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this over here, and I'll be use this rotate tool to rotate the chip, the chip lighting. Okay, now. We 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 have some 3D objects here. It's all set in place. Now, the next thing we need to add is the substrate for this chip layer. So the chip, we can assume that this is kind of like deposited metal on the chip that has been lithographically defined and so forth. So what we need to do is add a substrate. So we're going to add mesh and then add a cube. And we'll flatten this cube kind of like what we did to, to create this disk here. So while the cube is still selected, I'm going to go to object mode. So go from object mode to edit mode. And I'm going to select the face. I'm going to squish it down roughly about that size. And I'm going to go back to object mode. 
now what I can do is, while it's still selected, go to Set Origin Volume. And while it's still selected, press the letter S to scale. Oops. Select this square and then scale it up. So that it's almost the size of this, of the chip, the, the quantum chip layout. So let's get really close to it and make sure it doesn't actually overlap too much with it. It's just right below it. Okay, there you go. And it's getting kind of hard to see, so let's just go ahead and set some quick materials. So I'm going to select the quantum chip layout here, the model, and then I'm going to go to Material, Add New Materials, and I'm going to assign some yellow color to it so that we can use that as a gold finish. I can add this metallic finish and then decrease the roughness. That's good. And I can also add a specular. And what specular is going to do is if I change the angle, view the viewing angle, it will change the color ever so slightly. So we can change it to a slightly brighter yellow. Okay, so now we have this kind of gold looking quantum circuit layout. Now we can clearly define where the interface might exist, or, which, or should I say, we can clearly define whether or not this box is overlapping with that uh, circuit 3 model. Okay, so it's roughly about there. Now, the next thing we need to do is scale this down a little bit more. And I'm going to go ahead and go to edit mode. I'm going to select, use the face selection here, and then select this face. And then squish it inward so that we get really close to the border of the chip. And it should be roughly the same between these two. So let me let me fix that really quick. It's pretty close. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing with this other face. Select that face and then move it inwards. And get really close, make the border consistent. All right. Looks decent. I'm going to go ahead and go back to object mode. And now we have a substrate. But let's say we wanted to add another substrate or like a some kind of package support so that we can add wire bonds to this model. So let's go ahead and copy this substrate and then add one more below it and then move it down. It also seems like this chip is a little bit too thick, so I'm gonna go ahead and fix that really quick. Yeah, there you go. Move this up. And I need that to be bigger, so I'm going to push it out to roughly about here. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more. So, I want this to look kind of like metal. So I'm going to add a material to that. Make it somewhat of a gray color, metallic finish, roughness. I'm not. I'm not going to put it down too much. And then I'm going to add some specular finish. Make it kind of a blue, like a blue color, a blue specular finish. So now when you change the viewing angle, it looks kind of 
it changes kind of like a into like a blue color. Look at that. <laughs> Pretty neat. Now we need to change the substrate here and then add some subsurface. So I'm going to say material properties and new material. Then I need to change the surface. Click on this and I go to subsurface scattering. It didn't retain the color, so I'm going to go ahead and go here and turn it into a blue color and dim it down. Just dark enough. And yeah, that should be good. Okay, so now we got a quantum chip layout. And let's go to let's go to select the materials for these discs here. So I'm gonna add a metallic finish under material again. I'm gonna say make this look kind of a gray color, make it metallic, then add some roughness to it. It's good. And what I could do from there is Add some transmission. I'm going to make it somewhat translucent so the light can come through. And actually, the metallic finish I need to change is to 0 0.85 so that the metallic finish doesn't reflect too much light back. Okay. Now I will come here to this disk and I will add new material. So it's under material tab. And let me see. I'm interested in doing an emission. So I'm going to change this to some light blue color, very light blue, and then add strength to this to make it like 10 or something. And that might not actually be big enough, so I'm going to go ahead and select both of these, and make it much bigger. And the camera is it's going to get in the way of the camera, so I'm going to put it way above the camera. And then increase the size. Yeah. This disc might be a little too big. You'll see here in a moment, it's going to look kind of like a disc light. Camera view. And now if I go to the render tab, the uh, render viewport shading, we should be able to see this sort of ring light looking structure. <laughs> That's good. All right, so this disc, we might need to increase this to about 50 or something and see what that does. Yeah. Looks good to me. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is turn this into an emission as well. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the size of this disk that's, ne that's nearby, move it over a little bit, and then add new material. So that's under material properties, add new material, and then turn this into an emission, crank it up to like a level 10. Now we have some lights coming from the side as well. Now we can click on the camera and then we can begin playing with the animation a bit. So while the camera is selected, what I can do here is go to this object properties and then we need to save all six of these settings, the, the first six settings here on the first frame. So th these are key frames that we've just added. And then I will scroll this over to maybe like 50, frame number 50. And now I can actually move the camera around a bit. Okay. There we go. Go to zero on the Z. And there you go. You you can view this whole quantum circuit from here. Let's say this thing is not big enough, so that we, we can make it bigger, cover the whole chip. But let's also say that this big light is in the way, so let's drag it over here instead. Increase the size, and okay, too big. We can scroll back a little bit. I'm going to click on the camera one more time. And since we are still at frame 50, I'm going to go ahead and save the keyframes for this, this camera. And then when I scroll back, you can see that the camera goes from this view 
and then it goes to here. Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. So I might want to decrease the, the chip a little bit, maybe something like that. Looks decent to me. So that's frame 50, and then frame 100, I can click on the camera one more time so that we can track the camera changes. I can come to this different angle here. Zoom in a little bit. Then I can add some keyframes here. So now I can see the view goes from here to here to here. And then at frame 150, we can change it to something else. So here. I mean, technically we're done by now. We can simply just render it as is. But this is, I mean, if this is good enough of a tutorial for you up to this point, then feel free to, to stick around if you want to learn about adding wireframes to this whole quantum chip. I'll go ahead and a bit. So, I'm going to try this as well. So, you can actually change the reference. So, here. I mean, frame 148, I can the same. And then frame 1, I know the reference is going to be the same for you here. Now we get to frame 150. Let's see how I can do it with this to the same. Let's see. Then I can change the reference. I'll go ahead and see how I can do it. I'll keep it there. You can see the change here. Oh, I forgot to do 94 for the camera. So, we're going to hold the camera, and then we're going to do the other properties, and then we'll see here. That's why I keep it off for now. So, we're going to set the time to see it. If you guys want to add some, some of the profiles, you can change the camera. This is probably going to be a bit more. But that's why I put this in the sense of the properties. We're going to have to say these 60 frames are pretty cool. Change it from the camera to the next. Now, we can scroll back. Here's the first keyframe. You can see it. Here's the structure. Then, here's the chip. Then, it's pretty cool. And then, change here. Okay, so the terminal, but the control is pretty good. Which will see. I have a zone keyframe, and then right over. So, the terminal will start to change the profiles. And we can go to like, let's see, frame 1 to B, and then click on camera, go to this set here, and then we can zoom into the chip. Now we can add keyframes. Mm -hmm. Now we can move on to the chip here. Hold it in. I should probably change it to, let's see, frame 200. And we can add those. And then let's see, frame, frame 2 to 3. It's a little bit weird. Something like here. I really like to think of it as much. Sorry, 250. 250 will be up here. Yep. And we'll add more frames. 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 And then I'll do it here. Let's scroll to the right. Let's scroll. And keep it right there. And then like 25. Okay, yeah. Goodbye, we'll do that. It's a crazy animation. So, okay, so I'll try and here, changes, here, changes, here, changes. changes. I think we can change the buttons on the background. Yeah. I mean, that was already. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Probably 75. Let's change the size of this. We can see how it is. There's only a system of two seven. That's just a five seven. We can do it. Okay, that's the first. Maybe I'll see you next time. Yeah, that's the first. Okay, I need to find your records. It's funny. Um, we, we can go ahead and actually just add, start adding the, the, the wires. And the way you do that actually is we we'll go back to this other viewport shading, and what we can what we have to do from here is go to add curve, and then we need to add a path. And you'll notice it's hard to see, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click this arrow to the right, and a boom, you can see this wire looking from here. We can scale this down, and I'm also realizing that there's no. It's not just the wire that's missing, but the bonding pads. There are no wire bond pads on here for some reason. Let's let's add wire bonding pads. Let's go add mesh cube. And I'll scale this cube down by pressing the letter S. And then I'm gonna move this cube over over here. And that looks like a wide enough cube to have. So okay. Let me just scroll over here. Scroll back up there. 
from there. And now I'm going to go to edit mode, select this face, make sure it's face selection, squish it down. I'll extend this face over here. And now I have one single bunny pet. Yeah, looks good to me. Okay, go back to object mode. And I need to add three bonding pads. So let's go to modifier. And then we'll add bevel. You can just type in bevel. You should see bevel on there. You can change the bevel settings, but the default setting for the bevel for this purpose is decent enough. And we also need to add one more modifier called an array modifier. So array. And we need to change this number to three. And we need to make the offset. Change that to zero. And then change the offset on the Y. To some some value if it's if it's decent enough yeah then it's it's fine so i'm gonna scroll this over so that it sits roughly in the center of where this pad is supposed to be okay yeah that's good i'm gonna go ahead and copy this and then paste i want to put another one way on the opposite side looks good to me i'm gonna paste another one Rotate this 90 degrees. So I can type in 90 on my keyboard. I'll put one right there. By every pad location, the bump pad location. That's good. I do need to add a material for this, so let's go add material. Make it yellow. And then we'll add a specular. Make that yellow. Anisotropic. Should be the same. X by the way. Enter. Specular should be the same thing. I forgot to. I forgot to change the color beforehand. So, I mean, it's generally good practice to change it before you copy it over if you're going to use the same settings. <laughs> yeah, I'm just doing it manual. This is manual work. Yeah, that's good. This looks like it could be the same the other way around. I'll rotate this one way. Put this over here. <laughs> and it would seem to me that this the pad over here is too too much. I need to extend the size of this, so I'm going to click on this, edit. Looks good. Click on this. Object mode. Hmm. These pads are a little too, a little too bright. Oh, stupid! I forgot to add a metallic finish. So I'm gonna add metallic finish. Metallic finish. Metallic finish. I mean, there's there's really no need to do this much on these pads. <laughs> okay, tell it finish. Put 
click on save. Now I go back to this wire that I added here. It's kind of like a, a little line, and then the line itself can be turned into a wire. So this is basically a wire. What I can do is go to data, object data properties. So it's not data right there. And then if you scroll down, go to geometry, you can increase the depth here. Go to like 0.2, and I'll turn it into a whole wire. And then you can select sections of these to, to bend the wire. Objects. For example, I, I want to bend this this way, so a little bit closer. Same with this one. Yep, that's one wire. And then go back to object mode. Need to add a metallic finish. Zero roughness. Now we got a wire bomb. Um, this one is not contacting, so let's go ahead and bend this part down. Is it touching it? Oh, now it is. <laughs> Object mode. Yeah, yeah, it looks good. And then the rest I, I can just copy and paste this. I mean, I can turn this into some kind of like an array if I want. Edit mode. And then squish this portion. Push this this way a little bit. Okay. Object mode. Yep, that's good. Copy, paste. Okay, I'll select remove. This. Okay, there's a good pause here. I need to go do something real quick, and I'll be back. Yeah. Okay, so I've returned. Took care of some things. Anyways, so we have the wire bonds added here. You can kind of see that if we look carefully, and basically I've shown how it's done. Simply, you go here and you add, <clears throat> you go add curve and add path. And then once the path is created, you can convert the path here under data, the data tab, and then you can look for geometry. And then the geometry, you can you can change the depth. So geometry, scroll down and bevel and then depth. You can change this. It will change the thickness of this wire structure. So now you have wire bomb pads. There you go. Go to the camera view, the render, the viewport shading, and there, there you go. <laughs> Looks pretty sweet. Okay, so we can go ahead and render this. Let me greet it. Make sure I got the settings correct. Say here, and then render animation. <laughs> 